50-50 partners, and I tell you, it's going to be different this time. Actually, 51-49. A lot of people have counted us out, but we are back, and we are better than ever. How do you make it look so easy? Well, the real question is, why do men make it look so hard? You find her trying to find a new publisher. She's been given Minx, so she's just shopping it around to try and find the right fit. And they're all sounding, you know, exciting, but there's something that's not quite right about them. And then Doug comes to her and suggests Constance. So she, you see her sort of partnering with someone that's got a, a lot of money and you just see how that money affects the the direction of the magazine. It's not about the magazine, it's about the man who launched the magazine, found the diamond in the rough, right? That's what Doug Renetti does. It says here what Doug Renetti does is mount up towering debt against the promise of future receipts. That's publishing, my friend. You've overextended yourself like a madman. Man, that's publishing, that's the game. So, maybe not a good business for us to get into. Doug has to pay the price for the decision he made at the end of season one where he got on his knees and he apologized and he gave away a moneymaker. And so he felt bad, everybody was mad at him and he tried to do the evolved thing and whoa, what a mistake that was. And so season two finds him regretting that move and paying the price for it. A hard time with this decision. Yeah, but she said she wants the opposite of Doug and they all are. Well, she's probably afraid of making an impulsive choice. You know, one that might feel right in, in the moment, but uh, have long lasting effects that could, I, I don't know, throw her life into turmoil. I guess I can understand that. Decisions are, are rational or emotional, right? Rational decisions, easy. You weigh pros and cons, but, but emotions, feelings, powerful feelings, um, impulses, uh, I mean, that, that can be confusing and also paralyzing. Completely heartbroken. <laughs> this witch smashed her heart into a million pieces. A Just kidding, she loves her the most and will always ride for her until the, her dying day. Like Danity Kane. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that Bambi's heartbroken. She wants to pour herself into work, um, possibly have new opportunities at bottom dollar. Um, she realizes that business is mean and evil. Mm -hmm. So she, at the end, I think is just seeking connection. Is there anything else? Are we? No, I think that's it. Should we have sex now? It's all Bambi's fault. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the end of season one, obviously some of, uh, some of the way that Shelly believed uh, to be true about herself were shattered um, with her like, deep desire to be with Bambi. And I think she recommits to her husband at the end of season one. So season two, she's avoiding Bambi at all costs. And of course that proves very difficult because mm -hmm. um, the magazine is taken off and uh, Shelly goes back to work for a little bit. Um, yeah, so she's, well, you'll see. She, <laughs> it's a real will they or will won't they? Will they won't say. Yeah. Will they do it twice? How will they do it? Where will they do it? <laughs> who are those people and why do they keep taking our picture? That's Rolling Stone. You really need to read my memos, Bambi. Oh, I don't read memos on principle, but fun. Tina has been accepted to business school and she's trying to decide if she's going to go and do that. Um, especially with Minx being a mess and Doug <laughs> being a mess as well and her trying to figure out what the next steps are. Um, so she's really contemplating it seriously, but I think bottom dollar's her baby. And so she, um, you know, she really doesn't see herself just leaving it. I think she sees it as a place that she um, has helped create and develop and kind of runs. And so she doesn't she doesn't trust, I think, that she could leave it in everyone else's hands. But, um, but she's definitely contemplating it because she's trying to choose herself. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Joyce, but I'm broke, and I have to take a second job. Isn't this your second job? No, because alguien no me paga. Uh, well, what's the job? Some crazy rich lady tracked me down, offered me a lot of money to take boudoir shots for her. She wants some ink's touch. What, Richie, no, that's beneath you. I'm wearing an apron ogling my godson. Don't tell me what's beneath me. Richie has just come from discovering himself as an artist, and then, because his journey in season one is sort of like, figuring out and like allowing the world to see him as an artist and him coming to terms with that, it's the aftermath of that success, you know? So he's literally on top of his game, 
in the art world, but in re in the real world, he's struggling financially because, you know, mix is not a thing anymore. So he's trying to make ends meet while also being a big deal in the uh, photography world. Look at that man. I'm looking. I mean, I don't think the charcoal could do him justice. No, no, we need to get this on film and to do it right forever. It's so inspiring to see a woman owning her sexuality. Constance is a, a billionaire with a lot of scary background in her life. She kind of came into money um, through death, and everyone kind of expected her to fold, and instead she took her company, you know, she was the first woman on the New York Stock Exchange, so she uh, is a powerhouse. But when we find her, she sort of just drifted into like great expectations and just has a lot of naked guys around her house and a butler and some dogs. So when they ask her to come in to sort of this ragtag group of people, she's like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And I think the entrepreneur within her can't help herself. And she starts manipulating. I'm sorry, are you going to be a problem? She doesn't have a lot to say, but she's just kind of pegging each person off. It's like she has the ability to see, oh, that person has that Achilles heel. I think I'll just... And slowly, everybody starts realizing, like, oh, we're being manipulated. And she's just sort of sitting back there with her Hermes bag going, what? I didn't do anything. Patriotic. Yum.